Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hello. Okay, so uh, please welcome Maureen and Madeleine. So Maureen Duffy, Senior Principal Interaction Designer at Red Hat, and Madeleine Peck, Associate Interactive Designer at Red Hat, and they're going to talk about a Pempot Power Community Design Team. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So this talk is a bit of a love letter to Penpot. Um, we're basically going to talk about how we use Penpot and why we think it's so important. Um, my name is Maureen Duffy, and this is my colleague, Madeline. Hi. Um, and we're going to talk about the case studies of how we use Penpot as the design tool for two open source upstream communities, Podman Desktop, which I will talk about, and the Fedora project, which Madeline will talk about. But first, I wanted to talk a little bit about the team that we work on. It's called the Community Design Team. And the Community Design Team is an upstream community-based team of designers that focus solely on working on design for upstream open source projects. It grew out of the Fedora Design Team. Um, we actually, the Fedora Design Team has been around for a very long time. And because we've been around for so long, and I, I think we do pretty good work, other communities outside of Fedora were asking us for help. So we decided to kind of expand our scope. Um, and one of the other things that's really important to our team, and there's practical, not just dogmatic reasons for this, is that we use 100% free and open source tools to do our design work. So you kind of get the sense of why PenPod is so important to us. We believe that open source, open standards-based tooling is essential to build a healthy open source design community. And there's a lot of reasons why PenPot is wonderful for open source designers. It makes it very easy for us to onboard new contributors. And another principle is when you have community contributors to a project, they might not be working on it five days a week. They might be working on it on the weekends. They might be working on it occasionally. When they can log into PenPot and easily look at everything going on and get updated on how they can jump in and help, it makes it so much easier for volunteers to join upstream communities. This means we can have a more diverse population of people contributing to the design of open source. It means that open source will be more useful for more people. So it's, this is a really critical feature of PenPot. Um, you also, when you invest your time as a designer into learning an open source tool like PenPot, you're investing your time and your energy into learning something that's not just going to disappear because it's open source. Um, there's a story that I like to tell how I can open up GIMP files that I made as a 16-year-old girl, but I cannot open up files that I had to make in a proprietary program 10 years ago because that program doesn't exist anymore and it was a proprietary format. So open standards-based tooling that's open source is very important to upstream open source communities. Um, you control your files. One of PenPot's earliest features that we really enjoyed is the ability to export, and I'll show you um, why that is so important to us. Um, it helps you organize community feedback. You can prototype without code, and it makes it very easy to access assets. Before we picked up PenPot, we were using Git repos to store design assets. And I don't know how many designers are in the audience that know Git, but it is not a fun tool for designers. So having something like PenPot that's tailored to us is very important. But also, PenPot is very useful for open source developers. Um, I don't know if anybody has played the game, hey, designer, where's the latest mock-up? I can't find it. Oh, it's sitting on my laptop, and I forgot to upload it. Oops. Um, because of how PenPot is structured, they can just log in. If I'm on vacation, log in and see what I was working on. They can find the assets. We don't have to have that ping pong back and forth alignment between developer and designer to catch up. Um, there's the, the CSS developer mode in PenPot, so I don't have to answer lots of questions about, oh, what font is that, or what color code is that. The developers can sort of self-service and not feel like they rely on me for that information. Um, it also enables live interactive design sessions between design and developer. Um, working in open source, we work with people who aren't in the same physical location of us. We work with people who are all over the world. So we can both log into the same workspace in PenPot 
and then be talking over a video call or over a phone call and design together live on the same screen. It just, it's a total game changer. And the final thing, and this is a little bit dogmatic but a little bit not, is there's no proprietary tooling needing. Needed. A lot of open source developers are in open source because they think that they really believe in open source. So why would a designer come to an open source project and introduce some proprietary tool, right? But there's also another practical reason for that is that not everybody can afford these tools. And we want to open up the design of free software to everybody who might possibly use it. And that includes people who might not have a license fee for this program or that program. So Basing all of your design work on open source tooling helps level the playing field and it helps be more inclusive of everybody in the world who might use the tool. Okay, so now let's talk specifics about how we're using PenPot. So, and actually there's a little trick I wanna show you. So right now, this is Podman Desktop. It is a container management tool. It, this was designed in PenPot, but this is the running application. And as a kind of a full circle, it is running PenPod on my computer right now. So when we demo and show you our assets, they are running locally on this computer. So this means when I go home on the plane back to Boston, I can open up PenPod on my laptop and work on it, no internet connection. So these kinds of things are important, they matter. <laughs> okay. So again, what is, what is Podman Desktop? It's a cross-platform open source tool for basically building containers and launching them onto Kubernetes. Um, the team structure, and my team structure is a little bit different than Madeline's, so you'll see how like, different team structures use PenPot. Basically, at any given time, there's one to two designers, because I, I occasionally have interns, working embedded in a larger development team. Um, it's cross-geo, it's cross-functional, and we use a sprint-based approach. And this is just a little, because this is for, we primarily use penpot.app, the hosted service. So you can see how actively we use it. We have 21 members, um, designers and developers in, in the workspace, um, quite a lot of files and projects in it. So the number one, and I'm going to go through five ways that we use penpot. So the first way here is for user research analysis. So earlier this year, we completed a um, contextual-based user research study. And what we did to analyze, we basically broke out this pen pot, had everybody participating logged in, and we went through the raw data. We basically had like a spreadsheet of all the data we had gathered from speaking with users. And we just went through and made cards for each little data piece that we thought was of interest. And then we did some group exercises to cluster the cards together. It's, you know, a card sort type of activity you might be familiar with. And then we took those and we duplicated the page and then we sorted them into categories. And then based on these categories, we ended up writing a 20-page user research report. We shared that with product management, we shared that with marketing, and that helped us plan future features in the tool. So PenPod is great for this. The fact that multiple people can log into the same canvas and participate in something like this is very, very useful for us. Okay, so another way, we use PenPot for brand asset management. Um, being able to build our own custom libraries of our brand assets, including icons, illustrations, palette colors, is so helpful. It ensures that when I'm onboarding an intern who's with me for maybe the summer or maybe a semester and then taking them off, they can just import those libraries into each file and not have to worry that they're doing anything wrong. And we use Tailwind for our front end. So we have all the names of the palette colors are the same as the Tailwind. So when the developers are inspecting, they know exactly what they need to use in the code. So it's very helpful. And I can give a quick demo of what that looks like. So we have our, the Podman brand book here. And we've built out palettes and assets in the file. Um, we also use it for some product marketing. And this is something, our product manager actually, I didn't do this, our product manager did this. Just building like a standard template for, for screenshots that we use in presentations or marketing materials. It's very helpful for this. And it, again, having all these files in one place that's very visual and very easy to see, uh, makes it very easy for different members of the team to go in and understand what's going on. Okay, three more. Okay, so new feature design and specification. This is really the bread and butter of how I use PenPot. So going through all that user research, I have a mission that I have to build a new screen design, a new flow 
So what we'll do is I'll just, her, and I'll show you kind of, this is a simulation of what the actual hosted one works, but you can see like the breakdown of how we have this organized. So I'll make like a fancy little title card for each feature, and then once you're in the file, it's very messy. I, I don't have a good file hygiene, sorry. But you can see how we have all these different variations. And basically, we'll go, we have weekly calls that are UX sync up calls. And we'll open this up and screen share. And then everybody will give their feedback. And we'll walk through. And I'll use the comment feature to note what everybody is saying. And then when I go back up by myself to iterate, I'll have all the comments right there, right in the place where I'm designing. It's very helpful. And then um, bug fixes. So occasionally, like I like to work on new features because that's the fun bit. But every now and then, there's some little bit that needs fixing, or like this icon is not just right, or this thing is not, the interaction's a little awkward. So what I'll do is I'll organize things based on either the PR or the issue number. So you can see how um, they are named here. And I can have, this is like an example of where we didn't have a style for alert boxes, and we base everything off of Patternfly as like an upstream. So I had to look at the Patternfly guidelines and figure out how to translate them to Podman Desktop. So it was just a little quickie. But then everything is organized by the PR number, so in the future, if we need to refer back to it, we can. OK, and finally, um, and th this is the feature I really love. So I get to participate in sprint reviews alongside the developers and have cool looking demos because of PenPot's prototype tool. So I can show you here. This is a flow that I did. We're designing a new onboarding feature for Podman Desktop to walk users through the initial setup. So it's a completely click through workflow. And it really, just being able to do that so easily gives the sense, oh, this is how it works. OK. And I get much richer feedback than if I just had flat mock ups that were not linked at all and were not click through. So. That kind of concludes my, my talk through how Podman Desktop uses uh, PenPot. And now Madeline's here to talk to you about how the Fedora project uses PenPot. Yes. Thank you, Mel. I love learning about what my awesome coworkers are doing. And I'm so excited to be in this beautiful space with everyone here. So hi, I'm Madeline. Um, and I'm ready to talk about the Fedora design team. And if you didn't know what Fedora is, basically the Fedora project, it's an open source project uh, focused in producing an open source operating system, AKA Fedora. And you know our core design team is made up of five to 10 community members. They come in and out when they please, but I'm always here as the team lead, and um, that doesn't even count the teams that we work with under us, like Fedora Marketing and Fedora Mindshare, that have even more members. So the primary ways that we use PenPot, you know, let's look at the stats. We've got 35 members, 56 files. It's, it's very popular over here on PenPot. Marketing websites. And we have, you know, that's not even including marketing and websites, so just think it's even more. Um, and so we've got about four ways that the Fedora design team primarily uses PenPot. Um, and the primary one that I love, <laughs> it's my bread and butter, is the brainstorm sessions. Um, everyone in the nature of their work has a problem and we need to come together as a team and solve it. So it's really nice to be able to jump onto a pen pot file. We all opened it up. And um, I can actually show you. Just close that window. Yeah. Our last, well, I guess a little while ago, our mind map for the Fedora 37 wallpaper. And um, so at the beginning, we have to figure out what concept we really want to go with. People are able to upload their own images from Google, wherever they find them, and different concepts. And it's nice to be able to do this because if we were in an office, we'd just feel like drawing thumbnails on a whiteboard, and it doesn't get the same idea across. So it's really nice that this is able to then become a computer wallpaper. Um, and on here, you can see how one of our mind maps transformed into a final wallpaper. Um, and one of our second ways of using PenPot is website user interface designs. Um, 
we love PenPot so much that fedoraproject.org's new website was exclusively designed in PenPot. Um, and over here, we can pull up the workstation pages and all the different mockups that we have, you know, figuring out how it's going to look. Branding, marketing, it all has to be planned here. And it's really nice to be able to have every page in the layers section just to figure it out. And on here, obviously, we have just all the different iterations that you could ever even imagine. I mean, the multiverse is very popular right now, and this is basically our multiverse. Um, and while we were designing fedoraproject.org, one of our amazing developers also did user interface testing with PenPot. So it has many hats, and we love it for that. And number three marketing materials. So visuals for social media or events. I mean, I'd love to have an event like this one day. Um, it's just easier to create with PinPot, like the grid planned, the slides planned. Um, and when we go into the templates, you've got a huge backlog of every post that your team members have ever created. So if you need to create something that is just a variation of an old post, you're able to go back and just really easily find it. Um, and then it's just easier with your team members to be able to suss out what's not working. So we love that. And last but not least, we have the Fedora brand assets, um, kind of like PenPot. We we have the color palettes, we have the logo, the guidelines, we have our character library, which I think is one of my favorite things. If you saw any cartoon characters in the slides, it was because we have a brand, we have the asset library. And it took me about five seconds to be able to take them from PenPot into this, and they're all transparent, ready for whatever I need. Um, and it's great when you have someone new joining the team um, and they don't know where or what makes up a fedora guideline or brand color, and you're like, this is where you can go. Um, so that is what makes up our love for PenPot. <laughs> I think questions, right? Yeah. Does anyone have any questions for us? It's OK if they're still forming. Hello. Hey. OK. So oh, love the talk and everything. Um, I have a question. You, have, you mentioned some of those projects are community-based de design projects. The question is more how do you leverage having in-house designers with community designers, uh, how much, how do you do this kind of onboarding? It's easier to think about development onboarding for a designer for, we are at Blender, for us it's more like a foreign subject to rely on external, so I'd love to hear more. Sure, so um, there's a theory that um, one of my colleagues uh, in the Fedora project came up with called the flywheel theory of open source and basically, the idea is that you need at least one or two people in any given community who are there kind of all the time, that they're the flywheel making everything else go. And the way that I view um, the community design team is there's red hatters like myself and Madeline who serve as the flywheels. We're sort of always available and present to help out and like make sure things are moving forward. And then as community members or as interns um, on board, we're there to sort of help facilitate the onboarding. And we do, we have various programs that we participate in. I would say outreachy is one of the more important ones. 
Um, Outreachy is a, it's a program where underrepresented folks in the open source community are given the opportunity to have a 12-week internship to work with an upstream open source project. And the way that Outreachy is structured is you break down the 12 weeks into stages, like there's an onboarding stage, um, there's a stage where you're sort of planning out your project, and then there's a stage where you're implementing and cleaning up and documenting. And honestly, I use that 12 week, because 12, 12 is a lovely number. If four by three, two by six, there's like different ways you can break it up. But that's sort of how we plan bringing on new designers, is we look at it in terms of 12 weeks, what can you do across 12 weeks? And we take that idea from Outreachy and apply it to everything. So. We have different things that we do at each stage, and we sort of look at new contributors as being in one of these stages, and based on the stage that they're in, we start them out with different things. Like there's the initial getting, getting started stage where we'll set up a new PenPod account for them, we'll give them a little bit of a demo of, listen, this is where all the assets are, when you're making something new, this is where you go. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that's my alarm for myself. Um, <laughs> And um, when they get more into the more involved stages, we have weekly meetings that Madeline runs. Um, we call it the Fedora Design Live. We may be renaming it because we're sort of trying to structure to this new community design structure. But it's basically like open office hours. Any contributors who are around that week can show up, talk to us live, ask any questions they have. We can help set direction for them. So I mean, it's, it's very intensive. And it, it may be a little bit more intensive than development is. And I think that's because with development, it's sort of like you have a tree, and you can just submit a patch, pick an apple off the tree, and you're OK. And you can walk away, or you can get more involved. But design kind of goes down to the root of the tree. And that takes a little bit more investment to understand. So we sort of, when we onboard designers, we look at it as a very long-term relationship. So. I hope that helps. I have a lot of thoughts and ideas about this, so feel free to reach out to me after. And the, the only thing that I'll add is, because you basically said everything I was going to say, is that I think we really are concerned with good documentation. Because if Mo and I are both in the hospital like on the same day, I want someone who's slightly interested to be able to find everything really easily. Um, and then they can come to us with any like prevailing questions at the end. So I think good documentation, um, being approachable on social media, and basically just like slowly coaxing people in um, and knowing that it's not as hard as they might think or intimidating. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, thank you so much. Thank you.